Hello and welcome back. In the last episode I found a better rifle and I attached this muzzle to the end that we can use for projecting the bullet from. Alright, so now the sci-fi rifle has a reference to the muzzle. Let's go ahead and open up the basic gun script. And um, we're going to create some kind of bullet. We need a reference to the bullet here. And we're um, I'm about to introduce a concept called prefabs. Prefabs are very important. Um, so on top of the gun, let's create an empty object and we'll call that cube. And let's set its scale to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And we're just going to use that as a basic temporary bullet. So name this bullet. And in assets, create a folder called prefabs. Now we're going to take that bullet and drag it down into prefabs. And now we have a copy that we can duplicate as many times as we want. So when we create the bullet, we're just going to spawn this into the scene like like multiple times per second. Uh, the nice thing about prefabs is it, it's, it's kind of like a backup copy of your object. And also, if you have multiple in the scene, rather than having to edit each of these individually, you can just make modifications to the prefab and it modifies all of them. Like that. Um, so we can delete those. Let's go ahead and add a rigid body to this. And that's going to give it physics properties. So when we hit play, you'll just see it drop to the floor. And it disappeared. That's not what we wanted. Um, Oh, it's because it's parented onto the player. So make sure that that's um, on its own. Hit play. And you can see it just fell onto the ground. Um, it, it actually took some of its scaling from the gun, so we need to reset this to 0.1. Go ahead and, for, for some reason, it lost the connection to the prefab, so I'm going to delete the prefab here. Make sure it's 0.1, 0.1, 0.1 and it has a rigid body, and then drag that down to prefabs. Um, notice if you change if you change it here, it changes it within the scene. But if you change it here, it doesn't necessarily affect the prefab. Uh, and just to prove that, now we have three. I can change one, and it only worked on that one. But then if you hit apply, it changes it across the whole prefab. Go ahead and undo that. Change it to point 0.1, apply that. So now we have a basic bullet. And we can go ahead and delete that from our scene. Um, go back to the gun. And drag the bullet prefab onto our bullet prefab field. So now, now the weapon itself knows what type of bullet to create. In update, we can do gameobject.instantiate. And you might be wondering... Uh, if you're trying to start from scratch, like you, you might feel like I'm not really teaching you to code, I'm just sort of walking you through one specific example. Um, if, if you want to know more about coding in general, I recommend going to the Unity, uh, the Unity documentation. So like you could look up, um, well, f f a good example is, let's say you want to, to use the mouse to fire the bullet. So you could, you could search Unity, fire bullet with mouse. And that, that's going to probably walk, walk you through the whole process. There's lots of tutorials for most of this stuff. Um, so yeah, you, you, you could just steal that code. Or you could go directly to Unity's documentation and you could, you could search Unity, documentation, mouse. Um, and and th this seems like the more professional way to go. So you can see they have this input class with a built-in method called get button down fire one. You can click on that and read more about that method. Um, or you could read about like game objects and the built-in public functions on game objects. Like get component, we've been using that. Um, so a lot of this stuff ties back into itself like with connected functions. Um, I highly recommend learning as much about it as you can. Uh, later on, we're going to be using input.getMouseDown. 
So let's go to this input class. Um, get we ha we have all these functions for getting like mouse behaviors or keyboard behaviors. Um, so we're going to use this later to listen for player interaction. But for now, um, I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, so we're we're creating the bullet. So we're going to go ahead and use game object dot instantiate, and within the game object class, if we go back a few. If we go back a ways, um, Unity documentation. Close enough. Uh, you want to make sure you're in scripting. Sometimes it goes into the manual. Uh, that's not what I want. Scripting, Unity documentation. Alright, so now we're, we're in C Sharp. You could also look at JavaScript. Um, C Sharp is much better though. Um, so now let's just search game object. And now I'm using the instantiate method, which is right here. It's a static function, which means you have to type capital game object to use it. You can click on that and there's a few different types. We could pass in just an object. We could pass in an object and a parent. Um, we could pass in an object, a position, and rotation. I'm going to use this one because I want to spawn the bullets at the muzzle of the weapon. Um, but but it, it gives you a pretty detailed description here but basically it just lets you spawn objects. We're going to spawn bullet prefab at muzzle.position muzzle.transform.position and muzzle.transform.rotation save and now you can see when we jump into the scene we're spawning bullets they're not shooting toward the enemy they're just sort of falling directly down and getting in our way if we try to run forward um, but, but that looks like progress to me so the next thing we want to do is only fire the bullet if the player is clicking the mouse button. So we're going to do if input, so we're using the built-in input class dot get mouse button. There's three different options. Um, get mouse button down only fires on the frame that they click the button. Uh, mouse button fires every frame that the button is held down. So we want that because um, if the user holds the button down we want to keep firing. So we're going to say zero and if you're wondering why I put a zero there, we can go to the documentation. Uh, back, back, back. Ah, I lost it. At some point I had the input class open. Input. And then we're going to find the mouse uh, mouse button down here. And now there's three options. If you pass in a zero, it listens for the left click. If you pass in a one, it listens for the right click. And if you pass in a two, you're listening for the middle click. Okay, so we're going to save that and hit play. And now it should only fire bullets when we hold the mouse button down. Awesome. And we're coming up on nine minutes. I think I'm just going to forge ahead. Uh, let's go ahead and make these bullets shoot forward. So I already put a rigid body on the bullets. So th this rigid body is what gives the bullets um, the ability to interact with the environment physically. It, it gives them weight and drag and angular drag and gravity. Um, it's, we could even turn off gravity, see what that does. Now they just sort of float in space, crazily. And that does look really awesome. Um, so I, I will actually keep gravity off on the bullets. And let's go ahead and make those a tiny bit bigger. Like that. 
So now, now knowing that the rigid body is what gives them their physics properties, how do we access that? Um, how do we, how do we modify the bullets to shoot them forward? Um, first of all, I, I, want, I need to get a reference to the bullet itself. Um, the gun, even though it's creating the bullet, it's not saving a reference to the bullet. So we need to put that in a, in a variable. So we're going to say game object bullet instance equals, and then we're just going to assign to that the bullet we created as a game object. So now we have a reference to the bullet we just made. And now we're going to grab a reference to the rigid body of that bullet. Rigid body bullet instance our body equals bullet instance dot get component rigid body. So now, now the the gun itself knows about the rigid body on the bullet, and we're going to use that to our advantage. Bullet instance rigid body dot, and then um, the, these are all of the 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 functions that we have access to on the bullet now. So we could add force explosion, we could add force, we could add force at position. I'm just going to use add force. Now how much force do we want to add? Um, I know we want it, and it's, it's, it's expecting a vector 3. A vector 3, it's, it's a triplet of numbers. There's an x, a y, and a z. Um, rather than calculating the x, y, and z individually, we can actually just copy the x, y, and z of our weapon. So I'm just going to say muzzle dot forward, or muzzle dot transform dot forward, um, and now th that's just going to apply one unit of force forward from the gun. Easy enough. Um, I I I know. I know intuitively that that is just not going to be enough force, so we're going to create a variable called public bullet force equals, and let's pass in a much higher value like 400. Or, yeah, 400. And it, it's just good practice to end... Oh, and it's it's a float value. Public float bullet force equals 400F. And it's good practice to end float values with an F. Um, it, it can prevent errors later. Um, and now we're going to multiply the forward force by bullet force. So it, it'll apply 400 units of force directly forward from the gun. And I think that's all we need to do to project the bullets. Let's let's see what happens there. Yep, looks good. The bullets are definitely too large, and I don't like how they're coming out. Uh, you'll notice they'll come out at the the exact same angle, which looks kind of weird. So in the muzzle, or actually on the bullet, set those back to point one. Point one, point one, and then in the in the part where we spawn the bullet, we can choose the rotation we want them to spawn at. And so I'm going to create a a new rotation that's completely random. So quaternion rotation equals actually um, off the top of my head, I'm not sure if it should be a vector or a quaternion. Let's just let's um, vector three dot Random. Uh, random dot on unit sphere. Quaternion dot random. Okay, there's lots of different ways we can go about this. Um, I'm gonna create a create a quaternion called random rotation, and then I'm gonna assign that a value of random dot on unit sphere like that and then apply that here and that might not work I'm not sure if this returns a, a, a vector or a quaternion ah it returns a vector okay so this has to be a vector 3 And then I think this has to be a quaternion, so we might have to convert them. 43 and 97. 
All right. So it's it's not happy about that. Um, quaternion random rotation two equals random rotation dot two quaternion dot Sorry, off the top of my head, I don't remember how to fix this rotation, so I'm going to pause the video. All right. Um, there is a much easier way to do this. I'm actually just going to delete everything I did. And right here, where we need the rotation, I'm just going to type random dot rotation. Much easier. Uh, Unity does all the math for us. And now you can see they come out at random rotations. It looks much better. And the bullets are coming out with so much force that they can actually push the giant back. Which is kind of satisfying. It looks a little bit wonky, uh, but I'm fine with it. Do we need to do anything else in this video? Um, no, nah, I, I think that'll be good for now.